Yup, 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 yup. Ooh. Scratch that record. What's that guy doing with that flute? Whoa, put that flute down, man. What the? Oh, man. He got me again. He got me with the flute. The flute. He got me with the flute. Hey, welcome back to Sonic Weekly. This is the Sonic the Hedgehog podcast and Sega and assorted various interests. Uh, you know, we come out uh, once every seven days or so. Sonic Weekly, it's right in the name. My name is Grant, and it is just the hosts this week. We've had some big guests in the last couple of episodes, but now it's uh, time to spread your legs. No, what? Why is that the phrase? No, the dogs are barking. No. No, 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 this will not be the intro. <laughs> Smoothies, we're re-recording this. Nope, we can't. Okay, we're, we're forging on ahead. All right, I'm Grant. Uh, every intro to Sonic Weekly is uh, stumbling out of the blocks. But you know who's not stumbling out of the blocks? I just mentioned him. It's Smoothies. Hey, Smoothies. Hey, I'm here to spread my uh, wealth. There, yeah, that's better. Spread the wealth. Yeah, mm. sure. Uh, spread my smooth. All right, uh, all let's, over the... let's, okay. let's 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 <laughs> introduce uh, the director of Sega Saturn and Burning Rangers Endeavors. You know him from Rings of Saturn. It's Bo. Here we go, buddy. Uh, hey, do you know which record he's scratching there in that intro song? Yes, it is uh, the Batman soundtrack by Prince. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Yeah. I that was my second guess. What was your first guess? My first guess was the soundtrack to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Turtles in Time. Oh, I think, yeah, that was, uh, they considered that and then they didn't do it. I don't know why they didn't do it. We'll have to, you know who does know this is uh, he's out from the shadows. He's into the spotlight. It's David the Lurker, the star of the show. Hi, David. Whoa. Yeah, that's right. Here I am in the light. Ah, it burns. Oh, God. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're all little ants and there's a giant guy, kid with a magnifying glass. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think what it was is that Turtles in Time hadn't been printed on, on vinyl yet. Uh, you could only um, hold, you know, hold up your your Fisher Price microphone to your television and record only the Super Nintendo version because they wouldn't let you carry that into an arcade and record the arcade soundtrack no you had to wait you had to get the super nintendo version oh it's a, yeah i said turtles in time but i meant the third ninja turtles live action movie wait, you meant me the third subtitle <laughs> turtles in time right well they do time travel but it's not called that god it's what is it called? turtles in time it's called turtles in time is it called turtles in time christ nobody I don't google remember. it nobody google it yeah you should google it real quick because uh there's the video game turtles in time yeah and then there's that's the movie I'm turtles the movie it wouldn't be called turtles back in time turtles turtles without time did it have a subtitle at all i feel like it was just called turtles 3 all right teenage mutant ninja turtles deal with it in in film <laughs> uh-huh oh it is turtles in time is it really oh but well hang on hang on wikipedia is wait uh hedging here uh -oh. teenage mutant ninja turtles 3 often referred to as teenage mutant ninja turtles 3 turtles in time is a 1993 american Hong Kong superhero film referred to by who? Yeah, is, is that not the name? Yeah, is it right or not? Uh, right, because like let's let's see. We look at the poster: ancient Japan, uh, fifteen ninety three, without a map, without a clue, and without a pizza. The it looks like the slogan is the turtles are back in time, or like the, the catch, whatever the slug, whatever. Who knows? Um, maybe somebody. Sonic the called, Hedgehog. Uh, hey, you know. Oh, sorry. I have Tourette's. I uh, just occasionally <laughs> ask to say Sonic the Hedgehog. That's right. So we don't lose our audience. But I mean, to be fair, uh, Sonic and the Ninja Turtles have briefly crossed over in in a in a single panel of the Archie comic book. Just just the one panel. You couldn't see the turtles' faces. It was done uh, under the radar. But it's because both companies were publishing. I mean, both uh, the company was publishing both versions of the comic, you know, a Turtles comic, a Sonic comic. And hey, that's what IDW does now. And IDW has not had them cross over. But what, what is up with IDW? Nothing, anything, comics. Oh, that Fang the Sniper comic came out. Did you read it? Hunter, you mean? Oh, yeah, you're right. Fang the Hunter. That's out. I Yeah, issue one came out uh, last week. A little behind on the comic books. Is it good? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It, I mean, it's the first issue. It's pretty fun. It's not the most groundbreaking thing yet, but a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, classic Sonic. It seems like he's acting like Sonic instead of uh, a baby or whatever. Does he talk? Does he say words? 
Of course he does. Okay, Sonic good. Said, the classic Sonic is not mute because classic Sonic talks all the time when you see him in comic books. It's just that the video game, yeah, the video game never have him talk. Yep. Well, in Sonic Forces, he it seems like he goes out of his way to not talk. Whereas yeah. <laughs> it would have been simpler to just say, yes, he will do like a flip and a thumbs up. And you're like, OK, that sure. I think I understand okay. what you're pantomiming. I mean, did, did Sonic ever take like a, a vow of silence? Uh, Is that something that happened in the history of Sonic's life? That's a great explanation. Maybe he has laryngitis. Yeah, maybe he's just sick. Maybe he's just got a cold. Oh, uh, he's like Bumblebee. It's like Bumblebee in the, in the Transformer movies. We're hitting all the franchises. Okay, enough nonsense. Let's get to the news, and then we'll get into the nonsense. But the news we neglected last week, and I understand there's some big Rings of Saturn news, and then I understand there's some Sonic news that might even be news to me. Bo, will you start us off and then toss to David? Yeah, we'll we'll do a whirlwind tour of uh, Rings of Saturn. You know, let's start with Rayman. Rayman, the Ubisoft game from uh, 1995. Uh, so there's there's always been a puzzle with Rayman on the Saturn, which is that there's cheat codes out on on the internet, and none of them work. And so what's the deal? I I took a look. I figured what's out the deal with these Rayman codes. <laughs> they don't work. So I figured out what's going on. They're super touchy. You've got to do like multi button presses and press and release them at the right time. And uh, they don't have a very exciting effect, and I guess that's why nobody ever corrected them. But they're correct now. Rayman. Are there any Rayman podcasts? Is there a Rayman weekly show we can play <laughs> crossover with? They're probably all in French, right? They're all probably like, oui, oui, we love Rayman. He's a baguette uh, Eiffel Tower. <laughs> I apologize to all of our European listeners, uh, but eh, you know, not really. Listen, it's going to get worse yeah. for France. Uh, okay, so <laughs> the other French connection... Ooh. Hey, see what I did there is uh, what's considered to be the worst game on the Saturn. It's called Time Commando. It's developed by uh, a couple of French studios, but it only came out of Japan. And it's considered the worst, not only for its really bad graphics, but because it has a game breaking crash on the eighth level that doesn't let you finish the game. Ooh. And most people don't know this because they didn't get that far because it's so <laughs> difficult and frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. I like that style of game development where they're just like, no one's gonna, who cares? <laughs> where the the delvers just like, who gives a shit? They just walk out midway through the game, but it's still release it, still release it. Yeah, yeah. So a, a guy uh, sent it to me and said, "Hey, would you mind taking a look at this game? I was never able to finish it, and uh, it crashes right here." And uh, I took a look, and the first thing I tried worked. So uh, these developers were lazy, I guess. I don't know. But uh, hey, Time Commando works on the Saturn now. Wow. The Sega Saturn is becoming increasingly an attractive console to own. Uh, maybe for the first time in my lifetime, I'm very interested in getting a Saturn because it's like, look at all these improvements to these formerly broken games. <laughs> There's a, a vibrant Saturn mod scene and fan translation scene because due to the lack of success in the West, a lot of games didn't come out in North America and only only came out in Japan. Time Commando is kind of an outlier here in that it was you know, really bad, but there's some good ones that were exclusive to Japan. Um, another one, this is hot off the rings of Saturn presses, is uh, Kingdom Grand Prix. This is an arcade, it's a shoot 'em up slash racing game. Uh, it only came out in Japan, and somebody, again, sent me a thing and said, hey, I think this might have a, an English translation in it. Can you enable it? And the answer was yes. What? And the English translation is awesome. What? Yeah. Um, it was just there the whole time. <laughs> it was just right in there. They did the work. <laughs> they never published it. Oh, okay. So the English translation starts with, this is a drive to deathmatch racing. Chicken is no need. What? Why? <laughs> what is this? Meaning what? Chickens need not apply. Cowards need oh. not apply. Chicken oh. is no need, oh. I guess. Uh, did they use uh, AI? Like, did they retroactively somehow? Yeah, it was like 1996 AI. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. The winner gets a lump sum prize and anything they shall desire. Anyway, uh, in, a, in about a week from when we're recording this, you too can play Kingdom Grand Prix in English on the Saturn. All right. Let's do it. Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn. Is the greatest system ever made. It didn't have many Sonic games, but it did have some. It had Sonic Jam. It had Sonic R. And it had Sonic 3D Blast. I, I'm not ready to 
discuss it yet because I'm not done with it, but I do have some Sonic Jam things in the works. More Sonic Jam things? You've already More added Sonic Tales Jam to things. Sonic World? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. David, I hear there's also Sonic news. You mentioned <laughs> Fang the Sniper number one came out. I didn't even know. I've been a little out of the loop on the comics. Oh, that's right. It came out last week. Number one. It, it, has, it has Fang. He's a hunter. Uh, it's got it's got the other the other two. It's it's got uh, Bean and Bark. Hey, and I think Sonic's in it. Uh, it's fun and probably sold out at your local comic shop because I only ordered three copies. Let me let me let me ask you where where do I? I used to read comics happily yeah. on Comicsology. Uh huh. And then they destroyed Comicsology. <laughs> they ruined it. It is impossible to use now. And I don't know. What to do? Uh, How do you read your comics? Do you get them physically, or do you use? Uh, I read comics physically. I like. Yeah. I like holding a comic book in my hand. Can you just buy it digitally off IDW's website? I don't know. Do you keep every comic, or do you throw them away in the trash in the garbage? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> the... Who throws? David away? preserves them. He's 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 bagging and boarding them. David has collectible pizza boxes. He's not throwing away. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right there, yeah. That's true. Yes, I have every comic okay. that I've bought. I've never just thrown them away. That's that's heresy. <laughs> Good. I have I have a number of comics. I have I have over six thousand single comics. <laughs> that is a number. That is a number, right? They all sit in boxes because you can't read them all at once. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't at all. What if you could have them all on your phone? I think that'd be pretty cool. I mean, you could do that, but that's. Uh, that's but then, what fun. if they come around and they change up the app and they say, "Hey, we're going to fold it into Kindle," uh -huh. and then it just doesn't work. Doesn't... And then you're screwed. Oh no! Right. Then you're in my situation where you've got a bunch of digital comics you've paid for, but no convenient way to access them and read them at your leisure right. well also like you do get into the weeds of like um let's say hey you want to read sonic the hedgehog published by archie you can't you can't buy that i can't you could find it somewhere maybe maybe digitally maybe but also you know there, there is something about the fact here's, here's a printed piece of history if if you buy new comics does it have the ads? It doesn't. No. It doesn't. You need those Twizzler ads on the back. From the you need those do. Twizzler ads. Those you good. need them. You, you know. know what I'm talking about. They add flavor. Letter columns? They don't generally include oh, those in, in digital scans. Yeah. They sure don't. Those were great. Like in back issues. I, I hear there's some discourse recently about the Sonic Grams. What what can you tell us about Oh, Sonic Grams? Oh, that's right. I was, uh, I was recently... On the Sega Bits Swing and Report show, which is hosted by by Barry the No Barry Nomad, Barry the Nomad. I don't think that's his real last name, but um, I I I also haven't looked at his license. He's he's a uh, Barry Game Gear's older brother, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, right, we we were on there. You, you can look it up. But we talked a little bit about Sonic Grams because Barry recently scanned with uh, Sonic Grams Extra. Sonic Grams was the uh, name of the Archie Comics letters page. And apparently four times they also included for subscribers only a piece of blue paper that had some extra information. Uh -huh. That extra information being Ken Penders talking about himself <laughs> and also telling you, hey, these comics are coming out three months from now because uh, usually in the back it would only tell you, hey, what's what's up next? But it was like, hey. We're like previews. We can tell you what's going on three months in advance. Uh, it's a it's a fun little slice, but um, right, he only had three of the four because there seems to be evidence that issue one existed, but uh, no no one has it. So if somebody out there subscribed to Archie from the beginning and has issue one number one of Sonic Grams Extra and didn't immediately throw it out because it wasn't the comic itself <laughs> before you also threw out the comics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you you could you could find a piece of history. Yeah, yeah. What what would you write to a comic before its first issue publishes? Like, hey, love the idea <laughs> of your comic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we talk for a second about Ken Penders uh, and the Lara Sue Chronicles? Where are they? I, the number one Lara Sue fan, have been waiting for the Chronicles to come out for, I want to say, 15 years. And we have not seen a single book to purchase. How is this possible? We know he's been working on it. He's been teasing it for years, for dec well, not decades, but a decade plus. A decade plus, yes. Uh, well, I mean, 
Uh, Ken has put for pre-order up on his website the Lara Sue Chronicles Beginnings, which is a collection of the Moby's 25 Years Later stories that he wrote for Archie, and then also includes a brand new story called The Storm, which is meant to link the original Archie material with the Lara Sue Chronicles. Okay. But it's pre-order. It is pre-order. But he's never he's never asked people to pre-order a thing before. So that kind of sounds like it's coming. It's pending. It's pender thing. <laughs> Something's coming. Right. It's it's not gonna be the uh it's, it's not the new comic. Like well, I guess it's not even a comic, right? It's a, a series of graphic novels. He's not releasing single issues. Is it still gonna be an app? I mean, there's supposed to still be an app. Who knows? Okay. But yeah, so he's right. he's taking pre-orders. It's approximately 160 pages. Okay. Um. Look at look at that. It contains the stories from Sonic's 131 through 144, eh. with one exception. I don't want old material, man. I don't want pending. I don't want. Oh yeah, this is pending. I want. Oh yeah, this is happening, and I need it now. Well, there there is going to be there's a right the all new story, the storm, which features Jeffrey St. John and Constable Remington. Oh yeah, Constable so, Remington. So, <laughs> I mean, if you've got like 36 bucks, sure. Plus shipping. Oh. Or you want to, you know, have it signed. You could pay for that. Or, well, it might be too late now. The first 200 people uh, are supposed to have their name actually printed within the book. Oh, God. I couldn't do that to my family. <laughs> uh, is there any news that we're missing? I, there was something about a toy show. <laughs> it's... The legend goes that some of the first actual footage of gameplay of Sonic the Hedgehog, the 1991 Mega Drive title. This footage appeared at a Tokyo Toy Show 1990. Very early auto demo. It's not so much playable, but you got Sonic running around. And this uh, this build is notable for a couple of things. It's got an enemy that uh, didn't show up in the actual game, and it's got oh. this sign that says, it for sure says welcome, and it for sure says you are here. It also says something else, which we'll get into. And no, no evidence of this sign has ever been found in in the many uh, data mining expeditions into Sonic <laughs> One that have happened, including the prototype that came out a couple of years ago. So, th so that's the setup. Now, now, David, you you give us the the new news, right? That oh, there's more. Right, there is setup. Right, uh, right. As, as Bo was saying, yes, that was indeed the first time Sonic the Hedgehog was shown to the public in any form or fashion. That was his debut. Oh. Uh, Sonic had only been in development a couple months at that point in the the version that was shown in june of 1990 was basically like okay we don't really have anything to do let's just show something with a lot of scrolling a lot of layers uh and a lot of colors and that and that's what it is we've seen screenshots over the years it was it was also famously yuji naka said he wanted to put it in the sonic mega collection that came out on the gamecube long long time ago but they couldn't find the rom so it is considered lost media to some degree. Mm. And, th and that's really the source of its mm -hmm. allure, right? Is the, the fact that Naka went looking for it and couldn't come up with it. He couldn't find it, right? And it is like the first, the very first thing of Sonic. And it was only in Japan. It even predates the uh, Dreams Come True touring van. Yeah, tour, right. Right. That yeah. tour, I think, was in November of 1990, if I'm remembering correctly. And this was in June. And I, I mean... We do have a, some footage of Naka working at a computer in February of 1990, which is apparently he's working on Sonic, but there's no Sonic stuff on the screen. Mm. Oh, I thought people have seen the assembly and said, like, OK, yeah, there's a fragment of this on. Oh, yeah, game. yeah. Like, it definitely yeah. is Sonic. But on the screen itself, you don't see uh, the character Sonic is what I yeah, mean. The character, it does, right. yeah, yeah. It looks like nonsense unless you know what it is. Uh, Wendy Gitlord, who I, I forget if mentioned her before here on the show yes in conjunction with the yes. heroes script yes on a real tear yeah she's been i guess uh, going crazy buying stuff and she's been buying a bunch of uh, japanese video game magazines from the era the 90s uh bought an issue of game boy well it's called game boy does it have anything to do with the game boy i don't know but whoa there's a page about the Sonic Tokyo Toy Show demo in that magazine, and it's full of screenshots that we've never seen before, including this all the stills of the title screen, which includes like this little explosion effect where the Sega logo is. That's definitely not in anything we've ever seen. And we get to see a bit more of 
green hill zone in its primordial state, which I guess leads credence to the fact that it's an auto demo. Nobody was playing it. It was just mm. playing by itself on a screen. But yes, that sign, that sign, which is driven people mad over the years what does it say sonic is blocking it we used to have a scan that was so bad we couldn't read anything and then we got a super clear better scan and we're like whoa what it's a sign that says you are the word welcome and then below that never open well for a long time it was uh, i think it's a it's it's it definitely starts with an n it definitely starts no, with no, an no, n no it's a v it's a v it's a, and then v. we finally got the, the scan we got this guy right because people are like, oh, does it say never, never seen, never green? Like, oh, you know, this is showing off Sonic because there is also in Japanese, it says uh, debut approaching at one point. But no, Son- Sonic's not in front of the sign. It just says never open, which I think has confused a lot of people. It's Yeah, it's kind of a funny sign. It's like, welcome. We're never open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess like. I saw a couple of people go, oh, maybe it's supposed to be a, a a parody of the signs that says like always open 24 hours, like oh it's the opposite, but Or is it is it just kind of the same thing as Cope? Cope m- maybe. <laughs> like it looks cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wait, why you know why why not share this in the Sonic Weekly Discord? What do you mean? Is it there? <laughs> I haven't seen this sign. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm 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 constructing a mental image, but I don't know if it's matching up to what you're talking about. And God damn it, I gotta tell you, I was uh-huh. so excited when I when Bo set it up. He's like, "Oh, we got news about a toy show," and I was like, "Oh boy, new Sonic toys!" <laughs> Look, it's a, it's a toy show from 34 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it was exciting at the time. Oh, it was very exciting. What what else do you think was shown at the toy show? They didn't have I don't know Tamagotchi then. This was years before Tamagotchi. You, yes, years before. Um, we do have. I know there there are brochures that show like things that were expected to be there, but Sonic's not in them. Teddy Ruxpin, like what? Teddy. What are we talking about? Uh, I mean, it's all Japanese. I I don't know what's going on over Japanese, there. Japanese Teddy Ruxpin. Japanese. <laughs> A cabbage pat kid. Yeah, <laughs> but in the article itself, it does say that uh sonic is jumping but he's not curling into a ball oh but that it might be something that happens later look it's very exciting because it's primordial sonic and naka couldn't find it and also somebody asked naka hey what's the sign say and he said never seen and he was wrong that's right he didn't remember he was probably saying oh it's never seen like i've never seen a tax form <laughs> never had to fill it. <laughs> I've never seen these securities that landed in my account. What are you talking about? All right. I've... <laughs> hey, I heard we have a, a, a gab bag. Yes. In fact, we do. Because we're, we're like, well, what are we going to talk about this week? You know, we've been putting in so much effort and, and, and labor into this podcast. So now we're like, let's, let's dial it back. We don't need to play a whole game. You know, maybe some listeners could hold our feet to the fire and say, did you even finish Dream Team, David and Grant? And we would both say sheepishly, we're getting to it. <laughs> but instead, we have, uh, with some of our dear listeners, created a gab bag full of random topics. And I'm going to just pull out a random one using this number generator, 55. And 55 on the list is Professor Gerald Robotnik. Jeez. So the way that the gab bag works is we've pulled out Professor Gerald Robotnik. And you have to do that character's voice, right? <laughs> All of you have to speak like Gerald Robotnik, you ungrateful humans. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that's how he sounds. Maria! I don't think so. No. Maria, I, I think this giant lizard is going to cure your cancer. If not the lizard, definitely the hedgehog. You look like a lizard to me. Are you trying to do like a Bernie? Or- yeah, he's a little Bernie Sanders. He's a little Larry David. Okay. A little Larry David. Okay, yeah. Oh, man. How would Larry David have reacted if he was on the Space Colony arc? I know we've, we've got the, gra- the gab bag, but I'm sure. going off on a tangent. Maybe Larry David could play Gerald in Sonic Movie 3. That would be oh, that's unexpected, right. but it would be fun. <laughs> pretty, 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 right. pretty, pretty sad. Maria got shot. I'm pretty sad. Yeah, he could also take over uh, as Eggman, right? Like mm-hmm. Jim Carrey's bowing out. Larry David taking over. We don't know that Jim Carrey's bowing out. In fact, the the smart money is that he's coming back, right? We don't right, know for smart. sure, but like he's coming back, right? He's got to come back, right? I don't believe in that he retired. I don't. 
I don't believe it. It's being replaced by Jim Carrey's younger, similar looking brother. <laughs> uh, Tim Carrey. Jack Carrey. Uh, Tim Carrey. <laughs> Yeah. I think he was lying when he said he was retiring. He's not under the spell of some I can't tell a lie thing as in the movie Liar Liar in 1997. What? <laughs> I, I, I thought that was a documentary. I think Jim Carrey should play Gerald. Oh, yeah. He, he absolutely should do both. Has Jim Carrey ever done... Has he ever done a movie where he's played more than one character, Mike Myers or Eddie Murphy style? Uh, I don't think so. That's a bucket list item that he could cross off. Oh, yeah. He could also do the voice of Shadow. <laughs> yeah. Well, it could be one of those things. If Gerald created Shadow and he's like, I'm making you in my image, except you're also a hedgehog. So that's true. Yeah, that's true. So it's just the voice. It's going <laughs> to. Oh, right. There were, there's been some rumors. Oh, there's rumors. Right. There's rumors of who's going to be Shadow in the Sonic 3 movie. Oh, really? Man, I am out of the loop on so many things. I don't know. Who any and, rumors? and celebrities who have played Sonic, it's definitely him right like he, there's no chance he's not played it well, it's zero sources and also no one knows who the account is the hayden christensen fan club <laughs> i like it though i like i would i i'd be into <laughs> sure. hayden doing the voice of shadow yeah i like it too and i think that's probably where people should be calibrating their expectations because you know for a while you were seeing everybody put out like oh it's got to be keanu reeves it's like yeah wh why would why would they bring in a movie star who's bigger than any of the other stars they've already got in the movie they wouldn't you wouldn't do that you wouldn't i don't think you would do that hayden christensen fits more in with the level of star meter that they that they have in the movies and their budget yeah and their budget <laughs> yeah. yeah right that's like oh we're gonna we're gonna pay for the rock or you won't believe who's gonna be shadow that's right it's tom cruise yeah he's gonna do it that would be fun in between i could i could do that maybe tom cruise could be like he could be charmy b you think he's played Sonic? Oh, wow. Probably has, right? The way he runs suggests to me that he has not played Sonic because we have never seen him run with the Naruto arms back. He used to not run like that. I know the topic was Gerald, Gerald. but uh, hey, I wanted to bring up another celebrity who I want to know if you guys think this celebrity's played Sonic. Okay. Um, John Cougar Mellencamp. Ooh. You know, he's sucking on a chili dog. Sucking down on a, a chili dog. Yeah. Do you think Sonic is there? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Is Sonic watching Jack and Diane? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Or is he Jack? Hmm. Is Sonic Jack? J uh, Jack. Like, yeah. Is Sonic his real name? Or is that just his nickname? Yeah. Maurice Ogilvy. <laughs> uh, hedgehog. Exactly. Yeah. Ogilvy Maurice. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think the John Cougar Mellencamp has played, but not since... The Sega Genesis. I have to think like a green room writer was like, I need a rear projection television and a Sega Genesis console in all of the green rooms. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be willing to to bet that John Cougar Mellencamp has played Sonic 2. I don't think he played Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I don't think he played Sonic Spinball. Well, he might have because they use the same typeface on here. I'll put it in. Uh... Check this out. Look at this. <laughs> Same typeface. He might have played something. <laughs> oh, no. Whoa. But to be fair, that is also like every 90s thing. Like that's almost the Batman, the animated series font. Mm, yeah. But also he looks so funny. <laughs> no, that that does look like John Cougar, Jack and Diane act two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He could have done the music for Sonic 3. They had asked. Well, let's see. How old? Yeah. Maybe it's an important question is to ask, how old is John Cougar Mallencamp? He was born in 1951. Oh, wow. That means he was 40 when Sonic 1 came out. No. So he could have played it with kids? Yeah. His kids? Does he have kids? I don't know. Does he have kids? I mean, I let's have Wikipedia tell me. Personal life? He's had many wives. He's had he has five children from three marriages. Okay. okay. There you go. All right, we're gonna roll the dice again and generate a new <laughs> Wait, we didn't bag. even talk about Gerald. That's uh if we're if we're talking about John Cougar Mellencamp's kids, we've we've lost the plot. <laughs> I was hanging this whole bit on sucking on a chili dog down by the tasty free, isn't it? It got out of hand. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh okay, we can't do the one that the number generated. We just simply cannot. It is. It would be one of David's favorite topics, though. Okay, I'll bring it up. <laughs> David, yeah. Who are some notable people in the Sonic fandom besides YouTubers? 
oh, what? That's the topic? Yeah. That's such a weird topic. Um, I don't know. Notable people in the Sonic fandom besides YouTubers, like, like, like fan artists and... I think it's an I think it's an opportunity for you to talk about Dan whatever his name is. Dan Drazen. Drazen. Dan Drazen? Yeah. Are you talking about Dan Drazen or were you, were I you like I don't know. what about I don't, I don't know. He's older yeah. than Mellencamp, isn't he? Uh no, he might be a little younger, but yeah, Dan Drazen. Why do I know the name Dan Drazen? I don't even I don't know who. I know the name but I don't know why. Okay. Well, well Dan Drazen was uh a Sonic fan uh, on the early Sonic internet, right? He was a librarian who had access to the internet, so he was a, a grown man when Sonic One came out. He, 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 he was into the Saturday morning show. He started uh, getting the Archie comics, and then he started writing reviews for every issue that was released. His uh, so Dan's uh, Archie reviews sort of had a a life of their own in which people would look forward to the next review, even if the comic uh, was very bad. It was sort of like the, the palate cleanser. And, and since he was like, you know, a man who, who definitely knew how to write, because he also wrote some fan fiction at the, uh, he wrote a fanfic called Bloodlines. He wrote uh, one about Bunny Rabbit from Anti Mobius. I can't remember the name of it offhand, but like he wrote a number of influential Sonic fanfics, that were posted on the Sonic mailing list from early 90s. He did those reviews. He was briefly the official Sonic the Hedgehog Archie comic reviewer on the Archie Comics website. He did about three of them. And then... Did he have to do positive reviews on this? Did he sell out? He No, he was just reviewing them as he would, maybe a little shorter. And after three, they were like, you're done like we don't need you to to keep on doing it because he he wasn't playing nice he wasn't saying this is the greatest thing ever by sonic 72 yeah so i mean a lot of people turned to oh right the the bunny story was called when a bunny meets a bunny whoa uh right so he's part of that early generation the the, the rat.org generation if you want to call it that don't call it that don't call it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah like uh you know he's still he's still kicking around he's just um he stopped reading the comics uh, some years back because, you know, at some point the Archie comic was so far removed from what Sad AM was meant to be. He was just like, this isn't what I want. I'm not into it. Uh, he's also uh, like let's, he's a classic furry. You know, he uh, he started uh, his fandom with the Care Bears, moved on to Sonic, uh, a fan of My Little Pony. Uh, like, you know, he's he's just he's been around. He's well spoken. He he was interesting. He was from my home state. Yeah, he pushed what Sonic the Hedgehog discourse could be, and I and I think that that is something you know, in an era where everyone is shouting at everyone else in 260 characters or less. Like he he represents an era where people just sat down and had thoughtful thoughtful interactions. Yes, thank you, Dan. We are taking up that mantle. <laughs> yeah. Sonic Weekly. We're trying. We're trying. Right. Sort of. Right. I, well, well said. Well spoken. That's a that's a nice uh thing to say about a guy. <laughs> but, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, unless does anybody else have great Sonic fan things to say? No. No. Of course not. Why how would we know? You know. You know the things. We don't know shit. I know the things, right. We can't say ourselves because we're on we're on YouTube now. So we're That's YouTubers. Right. right. <laughs> we could be like, hey, Green Gibbon was cool. Hey, he still is cool. <laughs> yeah. Green Gibbon is absolutely he's not on YouTube. He's not a tuber. That's true. Not on YouTube. Doesn't even have a smartphone. I that yeah. I s I don't understand how that works. He lives in Japan. They had like yeah. smartphones before we knew what a what cellular phones were. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he lives in 1984 Japan, though. That's the ah. oh, he went back in time. He's he's living in that pre-Sonic era. He thought about too right. much Sonic, and he's like, I can't, I can't ever go back. He's just constantly living a loop between 84 and 90. Does he know where to find sailors? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that next up in this, was... okay. I was gonna go on a Shinmu tangent and about how <laughs> Sega didn't stop Yu Suzuki from. You know what? We're gonna accurately recreate the weather from 1986 for this game. <laughs> <laughs> Wildly over budget and years late, not even coming out on the right system. But you know what? This weather <laughs> accuracy is very important. And you know what? Even though, in case you don't want it, we're going to make it optional. We're going to test it both ways. Yu Suzuki AM2 bring Shinmu 4 out. 
and advance the story, oh. please. <laughs> I want Shenmue 4 to come out, and I still want it to end on a cliffhanger. I want there to be five, <laughs> at least five I w- games. Okay, I'm fine with a cliffhanger. I just want the story at the end of 4 to be at a different place <laughs> than it was at the end of 3, because at the end of 3, it's the same place that it was at the end of 2. What? 4 is going to come out, and then it's just going to be an extended flashback. <laughs> just like, what was what was happening with uh, Leo and his father uh, before the villain came around looking for the mirror? Lam D. Is that his name? It is, right? You nailed it. All right. Right. Uh, that's dangerously close to Lean Da, isn't it? <laughs> the end Da. You know, Dark Dark Legion. Oh. Echidna Lady. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, Lan- sorry. Right. I got scared for a second. I thought you were talking about something that matters. Uh, but- <laughs> She features in Mobius 25 Years Later, which you can pre-order now at KimPenders.com. <laughs> uh, okay, another roll of the uh, the grab bag, but this time we're, we're going to start with smoothies because smoothies has been a little quiet. want to hear from oh, smoothies. No, no. Uh, grab bag has located Snively. <laughs> what do you have to say about Snively? Um, he's a funny character, just like Antoine. He's so funny. I love Snively. He's great. <laughs> you're just, your sides are splitting every time Snively comes on screen. You're just like, yeah, falling over laughing. Uh, I say, man, I would react the same way if I was in the same room every day with Robotnik. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do anything. He doesn't, he uh, rarely stands up for himself. I don't know. He's just kind of like an instrument, really. He's not really a character. Well, I mean, at the end of the series, he he is the one that uh, sabotages the the Doomsday Project. He's like, does he? Yeah, okay. he's the one that causes it to to go uh, wonky. He does the same thing in Archie, uh, the Ultimate Annihilator. He's the one that sabotages it so that I've never finished either of those. Oh well, <laughs> but I'm glad he was replaced with Orbot and Cubot and etc. <laughs> and all the others and Boku and Deco or whatever their names are. You should watch the last episode of Sad AM because it's okay. kind of like when they get those deep power stones and Sally could do the blurry mm-hmm. beat when she's running. It's like this is my new religion. Okay, <laughs> it is. It is pretty it's transcendent uh, yeah it's psychedelic it's it's very interesting eh, is it interesting it's very co- mm. yeah, we'll just stay by what bo said <laughs> and they got that sound effect that i think was the same sound effect they used when alex mack from the secret world of alex mack's levitating things when they're powering up it's it was it's a vibe all right alex mack had some cool powers i i'd like to have alex mack's powers turn into a cg puddle yeah i happily yeah (laughs) i would take just the lightning fingers like (laughs) any one of her three powers yeah i would take i mean because like if you're just hanging out and you're like i gotta hide turning into a puddle like no one's gonna want to step in you you're fine (laughs) that's true It, it was good for her to Become a puddle and then slip through vents and stuff. Yeah. I su- I think is what happened. Just like Sonic Adventure. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, <laughs> dude. What the fuck, dude? Is Alex Mack chaos the god of destruction? <laughs> she might be. Yeah. I, I only remember the the puddle. I don't remember anything else. But I yeah, I don't remember the electric that. fingers either. But I <laughs> like the idea of it. Marissa Alanik is available to play Maria. <laughs> Do you think? And I think hundred percent yes. Did she play Sonic? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. She might have played Sonic on the show. <laughs> I mean, that's entirely possible. I think any child actor on, on Nickelodeon from the 90s played Sonic at one point or another. Yeah. Pete and Pete kids, of course. Uh, the cast of all that, definitely. Uh, the Roundhouse kids, eh, maybe. I, no, one, no one ever thinks about the Roundhouse kids. But the but Roundhouse had that really neat chair where there was the one kid who played the cranky old dad. And he's like, I just want to sit in my recliner. And it had like a built in fridge and the TV. And I was like, wow, that's such a cool chair. You can hide so many cool things in it. I like that chair. No one remembers Roundhouse. <laughs> I think they had to play Bubsy on uh, Salute Your Shorts, though. <laughs> uh, that's too bad. At least the graphics are good. Uh, big, colorful sprites. Mm. He's jumping around on the aliens, collecting balls of yarn. <laughs> Was that a Canadian production? Maybe they're playing Rayman. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't these codes work? <laughs> oh, uh, hey, you know, speaking of the Saturn, Bo, you know who you should get in contact with? You should get in contact with Drew Carey. Oh, tell me why I should get in contact with Drew Carey. I would be happy to. Because on the Drew Carey show, what video game console did Drew Carey have sitting on top of his television? 
Did he have a Saturn? Did he was he playing Virtua Fighter on the show? It was the Sega Saturn. Yeah, that's the console that was sitting on that show. Oh. I think maybe near the end it got replaced with something else because that show was on forever. But it started. The show was on forever, and that show got really bad. If it got really bad. Out. If right. he yeah. comes on the show, let's edit that out. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a shame that show is not on streaming because when it was at its peak, it was very very strong. It was funnier than most of the other sitcoms of that era. Not all of them, but most of them. It was one of the top tier shows but now it's I not think that one probably lives better in your memory i think you turn on one of those and you're like "Ooh, boy that did not age well but <laughs> you know the, the first season had like that kind of a laid-back song with a, with a cartoon oh yeah moon over parma yeah that's it yeah you're from ohio you know you know this stuff yeah <laughs> right i don't right but then then it's 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 slid into cleveland rocks where it's like oh they're just doing where did where did Drew Carey jump the shark? Was it was it the episode where they did the the live episodes and the musical episodes yeah. and the too many right. gimmick episodes and they started crossing over with whose line is it anyway too much and oh, right there was the April right those April Fool's Day episodes were weird like I guess yeah they had contests connected to them I believe but. I think you're right. You know, I was just thinking of the Weird Al song. It's all about the Pinniums and the video features Drew Carey and how great that song is like it captures the same vibe as the original song but the lyrics are actually funny and they're like accurate to you know computers in the 90s and you could just say a bunch of technical gobbledygook and it would have been fine in a parody song but no he did the work and he's talking about you know having a 286 and uh pentiums yeah way to go weird al all right weird al we uh we continue to celebrate begin quote weird end quote Al Yankovic. Yeah. Hey, you know what the next thing in the gab bag is? Is Sega Saturn. Oh, we're already talking about the Sega Saturn. Hey, wow, that was a lucky roll. Right. What? Oh, Bo. What? What's the Sega Saturn? Like you've talked a lot about the Sega Saturn, Clockwork Knight, Saturn Bomberman, that really bad game whose name I've already forgotten. But Time Commando. <laughs> Time Commando. Right. Time Commando. But like, what? What's a game that you haven't touched on? But it's like you know that like it's a like it's a really strong Saturn game or, or you might want to dive into it at some point, but you haven't got like what, what, what is a, a recommendation from the Saturn library that you would throw out that nobody. Thinks? Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you one that I'm researching, uh, which is the Panzer Dragoon series. I kind of missed these as a kid. I had, I think one of them on demo disc or maybe a video on a demo disc. Mm -hmm. uh, but somebody pointed me to uh, some material that I'm researching for the Panzer Dragoon series. And uh, I, I kind of see the appeal. And if nothing else, the soundtrack is banging. I've listened to that at work all day today. And <laughs> uh, I shot down all sorts of enemy dragons <laughs> metaphorically oh okay. that's not your job like... <laughs> <laughs> no i uh this is extracurricular okay. uh yeah <laughs> another center game that uh is kind of cool is uh saturn bomberman fight uh which i'm only bringing this up because i i just looked into it uh it it had a thing where you had to have this special controller from hudson and it this controller is in the shape of bomberman's head sort of and the eyes have these switches that can make the buttons press really fast so it's like a rapid fire mode hmm. anyway if you have this controller and you use the bomberman eye switches on the start menu you get extra levels in there and uh people have known about this for a while but most people haven't played them because they don't have this controller that wasn't released outside of japan but i i patched the game now anybody can play it if you play modded saturn games which is kind of a high bar but hey <laughs> it's done wow there you go i stand in awe you are you are uh transforming the the, the saturn community one game at a time <laughs> it's been how exciting has it been to watch bo's ascent through this sega saturn realm you know uh from like eh, maybe i'll become the one one of the leading burning rangers experts on the internet to <laughs> radically terraforming the saturn conversation online uh, it's it's been really exciting. All I wanted to know is how many passwords are there in Burning Rangers where you can rescue Yuji Naka? Answer <laughs> sixteen million. Sixteen million. And it just spiraled from there. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's what it drove you mad. Uh, it just you went insane like that Jim Carrey movie, the number twenty three, <laughs> but it was trying to find the Yuji Naka passwords. Right. So so if Naka had never left Sega, you might not have gone down the Burning Rangers route. That's right. 
I mean, unless he did insider trading at Sega. We don't know why he <laughs> left officially. That that is true. Uh, I think he just was annoyed. Annoyed that they said, can you make another Sonic game? And he was like, I don't want to. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have this one be the last gab bag thing. Eh, maybe. Yeah, I think the last one. Uh, okay, so most underrated Sonic thing. Most underrated Sonic thing. 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 It could be anything at all. Could be anything. Yeah. Uh, Can I just choose Sonic as a as a brand in general? <laughs> no, that is cheating. That is one hundred percent cheating. No, why why is it underrated? Well, because a lot of people see Sonic as a as a poor uh, product, and I feel like that's that's rude. It's it's a great product, and you should try it out. I agree. <laughs> it's rude, the rat. Uh, I don't. Hmm. Well, okay, I'll take the obvious one, which is 06. Uh, it's not that bad. It's not the worst game. It's been so overstated. No, it's really not by mm-hmm. the the intelligentsia of the aughts and the early 2010s. And the reality is, is it's just it's it is broken and unfinished. That is a fact. But there's a lot to like in there. It's far from the worst or most offensive. Absolutely. Video game. And honestly, if that's the worst thing that the Sonic franchise has done, then fuck off. Like this, <laughs> the whole franchise has been good. Like it's barely, it, it is a loss. It is a losing season, yeah. that game, but not by a lot. It's not like they went winless. It's like a, <laughs> a couple wins in there for that season. It's like an 06 out of 10. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not the worst thing ever. Yeah. Should have put that on a box. <laughs> <laughs> you can get through the whole thing at least once. It's, it's not the worst. You can finish it, which is more than you can say for some of these Sega Saturn games. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say like Secret Rings. I could never bring myself to finish that for, for the controls alone. Like, ugh, terrible. I could not finish the tutorial. Uh, yeah. 06. Everyone buy it. It's a platinum hit. <laughs> I, this is tough because I want to say Lost World is underrated mm. while maintaining that it is bad. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. That sounds like a walking contradiction to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's bad, but it's not as bad as what other people are saying? That's right. Yes. Okay. And, you know, okay, yeah, it has good music. But I think the reason why it's underrated is. It's a really big swing. It's a really big miss, but it has so many elements of a thing that could have been great. We're going to try to do movement in 3D in a totally new way. We are going to, you know, bring back a focus on saving animals and bopping back bad mechs. We're going to you know, have a little bit of more Mario energy to the whole aesthetic. It's a lot of things that could could have worked. We're going to have like a non Eggman enemy. Like all of these things people have said that they wanted. Yeah. They tried all of them. I think the controls are so bad that it sinks the entire enterprise. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's a it's a big swing and I I'm kind of glad they took it and I'm a little disappointed that they didn't try to make it better and went back to kind of a mediocre boost game and forces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that I Lost World is a game that I have played the first few stages of and then just have not been strongly motivated to return to it even though it's on my Most cause pc <laughs> and uh it could be there but i i want to give it another shot because especially what you're saying like it, it does i like where its ambitions are to some degree and i'd like to see it through at some point our friend sam frequent guest on the show described it as a deeply annoying game and he's 100 percent right but you know, it looks right. and sounds good, and yeah, on paper it works. I've ever told my story about my experience with this game, <laughs> particularly in, in the purchasing part. Um, <laughs> after <laughs> after I uh, uh, bought the game, played the game to completion, I really, really wanted my money back. So I bought the game from GameStop, but I took the game to Walmart and exchanged it for a new copy, saying the disc didn't work, and took the new copy back to GameStop and got my money back. <laughs> Oh, wow. I thought you were going to be like, so I, I took it to a place to get it, you know, sealed up again. Oh, there's some people who can. Took it to Funko Land and. God. <laughs> I wish Funko Land still existed. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. Co. Co. <laughs> yeah. So you, did, you, you, you no longer have Lost World in your personal gaming collection. That's not true. I've got it on Steam because it oh. was like five bucks or something. Yeah. Right. I guess at some point we've all 
gotten Lost World on Steam because they're like, here's every <laughs> Sonic game for three dollars. I think that's how I got it. I no longer have access to the Yoshi or Zelda DLC, but yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I got it for the shirt. I, I I bought that package deal just for the shirt because I bought it before <laughs> I even had a PC to play Steam. Oh, oh. I was like, oh damn it, I can't even play these games. I thought I could play them on my Mac. I was wrong. Oh well, at least I got the shirt pre-order bonus or whatever bonus. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Good for me. Bully for me. I got all the red rings in that game because, you know, they're not going to put Super Sonic in a game and me not get it, right? <laughs> and I'm so angry about that experience that even to this day. Oh, I haven't I haven't bothered. I, I beat the game, but I have I have not 100 percented it. And whenever I try, it is such a painful slog. Those it's those missions. Those missions are the worst thing because they don't they're not anything but pointless and tedious and there's 10,000 of them and one day you'll do them all and then on Steam it'll say you did this. <laughs> Are you happy with yourself? I enjoy 100% in games but I think I have given up on the idea of 100%ing most Sonic games <laughs> and I should have known from the days of Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 <laughs> when I just cheated and downloaded the VMU save file to get Green Hill Zone and Sonic Adventure 2 because but I know that Bo got all like legitimately earned all of the pro gamer, got the all the A ranks. And but more recently with Frontiers, uh, like I want to 100 percent that game with the uh, all the various extra plus bosses, the you know, the extra difficulty bosses and the mm -hmm. new things to find on the island and haven't done so. So I think I am just saying Sonic is a game franchise where I don't 100 percent it, whereas Mario, every Mario game. I feel like I owe it. I think I have to. Like I have to 100 percent the game. But Sonic, it's now just like, just not gonna happen. It's about accepting our limitations. That's the moral of that story. Here's uh, a game you should 100 percent is Dream Team. It'll take you 25 weeks to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Are you? Has really... it been 25 weeks? Uh, no, yeah. but no, no way. You have to. You have to do at least 25 different Tails challenges, which refresh every week, uh, uh, okay. just uh, to get all the trophies. Oh yes. Yeah. So some someone must be doing it. Someone. I want to know who's the first 100 percenter on Dream Team who will hold that crown six months in oh right we didn't talk about this did you know that dream team got an update what i Whoa. saw that and i didn't even click it what was the update oh um it was they fixed some glitches and added one buzz bomber to a level <laughs> all right i think it's time to end the show is there anything else before we play the tune uh we didn't talk about the did we talk about we didn't talk about the knuckle show titles we don't care oh okay no, no, we because I, I we have to draw the line somewhere. And I think uh -huh. that is the line when there's a trailer, when there's something to look at. Yeah, I, I can't wait to talk about it with you. I'm very excited <laughs> when it's just episode titles and like guest star names and episode synopses. What is there to say? The Flames of Disaster Grant. If we're if we're Sonic <laughs> oh, Daily, no. then I think and we're looking to fill up that much time. <laughs> then yeah. Right. But Sonic Weekly, I feel like it's not it doesn't make the cut. It's not newsworthy. It's not even though we have to find content every week. <laughs> <laughs> but it, was there anything really that jumped out to you in terms of any of the episode titles? Was there like was there an episode that's titled Enter Rouge the Bat or something? No, no. It, the the big one is that episode four is entitled "The Flames of Disaster," yeah. which is oh yes, the thing from Ozark. Right. So that that's why it's newsworthy. Because otherwise, it's like Reno, baby, and then what happens in Reno stays in Reno. That means they couldn't think of two different shows without <laughs> using the word Reno. Yeah, real real reno arc in here oh wow yeah yeah well we'll see if it's sonic 06 or not or if it's just like you know it might just be an annoying title that is teasing us yeah yeah it's to get us tweeting about it i'm i'll tweet i'll tweet uh no nah, never mind uh it did confirm that there's six episodes though which oh uh, it can also talk about how in 1994 john cougar mellencamp had a minor heart attack oh, no. he was smoking up to 80 cigarettes a day Whoa. how do you That's do that nothing but a good time there <laughs> <laughs> he's doing a lot more than sucking down chili dogs uh, <laughs> oh folks folks i think we gotta do the drop we gotta do the drop hey baby what's going on I know what's going on. It's the end of another Sonic Weekly Woe. That's the voice we're doing. I can stop that voice because you know what? Song begins as a show ends. For every ending has a beginning. And every beginning 
as an ending. And in the middle, you should, of course, subscribe to Sonic Weekly if you haven't. That's right, listener. We hope that you've enjoyed another wonderful episode of our weekly endeavor, diving into the crazy and mystical world that is Sonic the Hedgehog. If you haven't, uh, be sure to subscribe to our funny little show on whatever podcatcher of choice that you have. Let me, uh, yeah. And you know what? If you enjoyed this and you want to reach out to us and say hello, of course, we have our Gmail email address, which is Sonic Weekly Podcast at gmail.com you email us you say hi and if you want to get into our discord server you email us and say give me that link baby and we'll say baby keep on forgetting we have the youtube account if you haven't uh, followed us there yet you can go ahead you know just search do we have a custom url yet yeah youtube.com slash sonic dash weekly yes yeah sonic hyphen weekly you know uh, wait a minute we're, we're not youtube slash sonic dash weekly no no are we just sonic weekly just hot tips for bands college <laughs> campus gigs what <laughs> what are you talking about what it, what it, what's the so, youtube.com slash sonic dash oh no <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> and they've got sonicweekly.com and it's a guy screaming into a microphone oh you know what it is it's i think bad. maybe it at oh, Sonic Dash Weekly. Right. That's a YouTube channel without the ad. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. if you want to subscribe to our YouTube account, it is youtube.com slash ampersand. That's the at symbol. No, that's not yeah. Ampersand <laughs> is the and symbol, like yeah, Sonic right, that is. and Knuckles. <laughs> right, that is the wrong one. <laughs> what is the at symbol called? I forget. It's it's just, it's just a, really? It's yeah. just, it's never had another word? Oh, it's the address sign. The address oh, sign. Oh, Whoa. Yeah address sign nobody says that so it's <laughs> at sonic dash weekly i can't believe there's another sonic weekly what the fuck we ch- i thought we checked this shit when we were starting this goddamn show we we're like nobody's called sonic weekly they have a google plus account <laughs> we don't have that oh my god right there's jethro he's the guitarist and producer maybe we need to rename the show sonic uh daily <laughs> sonic, da- sonic daily sniffly weekly is what we could do uh, <laughs> yes yes yeah so it's at sonic dash weekly if you go to at sonic weekly you'll see something else well say hi to them be good neighbors and then come over to us <laughs> yeah uh thank you smoothies for the edit i'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with this ending bit thank you smoothies <laughs> Yes, and of course, uh, thank you, Bo, for keeping the rings in order on the old Saturn. And thank you, Grant, for continuing to Grant Ning. This was a wild fucking ride. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe.